we're going to go to a larger clavichord of the sort that we would find in the 18th century. And this instrument was made by Paul Irvin, whom you'll remember I talked about vis-a-vis -vis the uh, double manual harpsichord in the other room. Paul uh, built in Glenview and Northfield and uh, regrettably is now retired and is living in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we'll hope he'll come back to maintain instruments or just to do consultation uh, because, in my opinion, this guy is a major league builder. Um, as you can see, we have many more keys on this instrument. And, of course, this will accommodate everything really up to Mozart and early Beethoven. And um, first I'll improvise a small prelude so that you get the idea that this clavichord, while bigger, actually is a little bit sweeter, less aggressive in tone. Uh, so, here we go. And now, a slow movement of a Mozart keyboard sonata. Uh, Mozart kept a clavichord just like this. You can see it today in the uh, birth house in Salzburg. And it's likely that Mozart probably did his composition at the clavichord. It's quiet. You're in your own world. You can think it's the loudest instrument in the world until your cell phone rings. Um, but uh, this is the slow movement, the Andante, of K330. Or for those of you who are dedicated to the revised Kuschel catalog, K300H.
And as you've noticed, with this instrument, more so than the um, uh, older style clavichord, you can get vibrato on it. And anytime you see eighth notes with slurs and dots on them in Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, that's the sound he wants. It's called bebung in German or quaking. Uh, and uh, so this is the only stringed keyboard instrument that can get a vibrato.